Triumph was always a band that tried to make fans happy. Could Triumph reunite? I'm Paul from VRP Rocks, and I've just spoke to Rick Emmett, and he gives us the lowdown on where the band are currently at. The first right, question great. is one that I no doubt you get asked constantly, all the time, and you probably know what's coming up. Uh, Switch 625, Train Hunters Family, Mike Gadero, and Montana Guy 51, they all want to know, what is the chance of a Triumph reunion to make the fans happy? Uh, well, Triumph was always a band that tried to make fans happy. And um, if you've seen the documentary, you saw a thing where the fans, the, the, the greatest fans from all over the world were brought in. And we did this kind of a fan fest for performance. Um, and I think that might have been Gil Moore's last hurrah. You know, uh, he he practiced and rehearsed and and. For Gil, it's a tough go to, to, to play his way through a full set, sing half the songs, because that was part of the thing, too. And, um, you know, we're just we're 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 not getting any younger. And uh, the arthritis, the things in your back that can start happening, for, especially for drummers. Um, and uh, in terms of singing, Gil wears hearing aids now all the time. So there's that. Um, uh, I think. We did that thing for the documentary, and I, it, he seemed like, okay, you know, I'm done. Like, I'm finished. Um, and I retired from the road, uh, you know, right before COVID hit, because I'd had enough of airports and hotels and, you know, uh, Ubers and, you know, whatever. Like, I just, I'd had enough, you know. Um, and it, it's not like any of us need the money. And I think one of the things that does drive some bands to keep doing it, I mean, some bands do it because they, they love it. And they're, you know, they, they just, they, they, they can't imagine a life without it. But other guys, they're on their third marriage and they've got all of these, this alimony that's piling up, you know. Um, I mean, the, the Monty Python guys go out because Cleese has got all of this alimony. He's got me. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's going to happen and I hate to disappoint those guys, but you know, I think one of the things is we keep putting out these books and compilation things and we do interviews with folks like you so that we can keep something alive. You know, um, it's not, it's not gone forever, but um, I don't think the, uh, I don't think a live gig or a tour is, is, uh, is on in the cards. And what's the relationship like between, between the three of you? Is everything rosy still? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we try to get together every Christmas and have a dinner where we sit down together, just the three of us, and kind of tell stories and you know have a few drinks and uh, and then you know there's constant things where I'm going to the metalworks, seeing Gil, sitting down. Uh, Mike still he, like he, he's I think he sold his place in Jamaica, but I think he's got another one that he, he goes and he rents now, and he goes there for like four months of the winter all the time, you know, every year. So uh, I don't see as much of him, but we do, we get together. There's things where, you know, we have business that we have to attend to. And, and uh, you know, uh, I had those guys play on it. This would be something, I don't know if you, but I, I did a record for Mascot Pro Vogue. And um, uh, that's was 2016. And Gil and Mike played on a track on that called Grand Parade. So, I mean, um, if anybody's not aware of that, they should track that one down and give that a listen. Because it was kind of fun. That was like going all the way back to the Suitcase Blues song from Just a Game album in 1979. So Grand Parade was the sort of 2016 version of, you know, a, a jazzy kind of a little, just a trio sitting around and, and having the song about reminiscing. And and that was a special thing for me, that, that cut. 